All right, welcome back. This is uh, section four of the Scrape the Planet class. Um, I'm your instructor, Mitchell Edwards. If you haven't watched the last three sections, definitely recommend going back and watching those. They all really build on top of each other. So you're going to be super, super lost if you haven't watched those already. Also, very highly recommend watching the last video where we go over concepts of spiders, how they're different from scrapers, and exactly like what a spider is. So let's talk about what problem we are going to be solving over the next couple of videos. This is called the Kevin Bacon problem. So let's jump into the problem that we are going to be solving over the next couple of videos with spiders. Um, as you can tell, this is going to be a whiteboard episode. We're going to talk about the scope of the problem and a kind of description of the problem in this video. And then in the next two videos, uh, two or three videos, two, three or four videos, something like that, we'll be actually writing out the code to solve the problem. So we are going to be talking about the Kevin Bacon problem. And if you haven't heard of this problem before, um, it's fairly common. I think in undergraduate courses to talk about, um, generally it's to introduce the idea of linked lists um, and uh, depth first search versus breadth first search. Um, so this is a problem that kind of arose with uh, like movie freaks, people who watch tons of movies. They noticed that back in the day, Kevin Bacon was in every movie or at least they were with an actor or, or, or they've, uh, they've at least got a lot of like connections with other actors. And what that means is, you know, you've got Kevin Bacon here in the middle. We'll just call him KB. And he's been in a movie with that actor, that actor, that actor, that actor. And just think tons and tons of movies. I'll flash up how many films he's got up on the screen here. I don't have it memorized off the top of my head. So he's been with tons of actors. He's been in movies with tons of actors. Didn't want that to sound wrong. Um, but let's just say this this actor right here, um, let's just call them A1, like the steak sauce. Um, let's just say that actor, Kevin Bacon, has not been in a movie with them. Basically, the, the kind of problem that this is um, and, and where this kind of arose was that people noticed like, okay, well, maybe he wasn't in a movie with, you know, this actor. But this actor was in a movie with that actor. So this actor is still like by kind of a, a, a certain commutative property or associative, associative, commutative, one of the two, by a certain property is related to A1. It's just through an intermediary actor. Let's just say there's A2 and A2 has not been in a movie with Kevin Bacon and has not been in a movie with any of the actors that Kevin Bacon has been in a movie with. But A2 has been in a movie with A3 and A3 has been in a movie with that actor. Thus, there's a relationship. There's a path, basically, between Kevin Bacon and A2. I believe, when I last looked this up, there is no actor who is wholly disconnected from Kevin Bacon in Hollywood. And I don't know if that's just by hopping through producers and directors, or if that's just purely by hopping through actors. But basically that shows that Kevin Bacon is just very, very highly interconnected within at least American Hollywood. I don't know if they tested that on like the Hong Kong cinema scene or, or something like that. But Kevin Bacon's been in a ton of movies with a ton of actors and all of those actors are also very well connected. So there's, there's this web of actors who are related to actors who are related to actors who are related to actors and they're interconnected. And it's, it ends up being a very interesting computer science problem. Because there's this idea of depth first searches, which are, you know, I've got actor one, two, three, four, five, and then we've got another level of actors, and then another level of actors. And the idea is if you're trying to get from point A to point B, the way that you search is you're going to go as deep in your search as humanly possible. So you didn't find the connection there, so you're going to go on to the next one. And you're going to keep going as deep as humanly possible until you eventually find your, your end route here. And depth first search is, you know, one solution to the Kevin Bacon problem. We are going to basically pivot through this actor to 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 this actor, to this actor 
And that's going to be how we try to find connections between Kevin Bacon and this actor. Instead of depth first search, there's also breadth first search. So the idea is, let's uh, make a little bit of room. So the idea with breadth first search is if you're trying to find a connection between this actor and this actor, and they've got this level of connections and those connections have this level and those connections have this next level and you just keep on rolling through and we want to find a connection here and they are on this level then the idea is you're going to try every single actor that is related to the initial actor if that doesn't work then you're going to try every single actor that's also related to those actors and then if that doesn't work you're going to move on to the next level of depth and it's got this idea of depth and and so does you know depth for search obviously does too so you've got one you've got two three four and then if we're looking up here you've got one two three four so basically that is your depth and your breadth is out here so one two three four five so you're basically with breadth first search you're searching all of the first level connections first and if that's not the actor that you're searching for then you're searching for the next level of, of depth you were searching for people who are related to actors within the first level of depth but not necessarily to the original actor so you're going to keep going through every single layer of depth first which is why it's called breadth first search every single layer of breadth first um, and you're just going to keep going until you end up finding the actor that you're looking for. So, how does this relate to spiders at all? It's an interesting computer science question, but doesn't immediately sound like something we can apply spiders to. Well, we looked at IMDb, and IMDb has got actors and movies. So we're going to start with Jason Statham, like we did before. Statham? I hope I'm spelling that right. So we're going to start with Jason Statham, and he was in The Expendables. Which was an interesting movie, to say the least. So you've got these actors and these movies. And basically what you can do is you can use the movies to relate actors to other actors fairly easily. So who else was in the movie The Expendables? Let's say Dolph Lundgren. They were both in the movie The Expendables. And uh, Dolph Lundgren was in, um, let's see, Despicable Me. He was also in Despicable Me which I found surprising. I guess I haven't watched that movie like recently enough. Despicable Me with Steve Carell. How do I spell it? Steve Carell? R-R-E-L? Yeah, something like that. He was also in Despicable Me. So they've got a connection. Steve Carell was also in Crazy Stupid Love. And guess who else was also in that? Kevin Bacon. So, what, what, why does this matter? So he was in there. Steve Carell was in there. So there's your connection there. So that means that Jason Statham is connected to Dolph Lundgren, who's connected to Steve Carell, who's connected to Kevin Bacon. So that means that Jason Statham is connected to Kevin Bacon. There's a route where we've got KB here. There is a route from KB, if we're going backwards, to Steve Carell, to Dolph Lundgren, to Jason Statham. Now, this is a very arbitrary problem to solve. And Kevin Bacon isn't necessarily like 
the most important like actor to start it. You could start with any other actor. And that's going to be one of the things that we can kind of see in our data is we start gathering data in, we start putting it in our database. We can actually start from any actor and get to any other actor. That's, you know, once you're building these trees, you know, it doesn't really matter at what root node you start because all of the trees are fairly interconnected. The only problem that you get to is if you're trying to find a route between Kevin Bacon and this actor, and they're connected to this person, to that person, to that person, but there's not a connection between the two trees, that's called, it, it's a disconnection. So there is no route from Kevin Bacon's actor three. Um, the point that they try to make with the Kevin Bacon problem is that when you've got a node like Kevin Bacon, an original actor like Kevin Bacon, it's going to be very, very rare or what seems like impossible to find an actor who does not have a route, some kind of connection with Kevin Bacon. This actually is a fairly good problem to solve with spiders, and here's why. Um, especially with the way that IMDB is laid out, it's fairly easy, or, or, or at least it's fairly easy to theorize how we could solve this problem or start to solve this problem with spiders. We've got actor pages. So we've got pages that are about the actor. And the actor can be thought of as the node. And then we've got movies that each actor was in. And that can be thought of as a connection. So a connection between nodes is going to be a movie. So the, the cool part about this, and the reason why IMDB and the Kevin Bacon problem in general is a really good one to start with with spiders, is that once you go to a movie page, that movie is going to have a list of actors. So a list of nodes. So every actor is essentially going to have a list of connections. And once you go to the page corresponding to that movie or that connection, you can then get the, the, the actors that the original actor was connected with. So we talked about before that spiders are really good for finding relationships between nodes. Um, that was like the most important thing about spiders um, is the whole crawling um, pages that are rich with links. IMDB is perfect for this because every single actor page contains links to tons of different movies, which contain links to tons of different actors. We'll find one of the only, like the, the only kind of downfalls is that each movie really only has a, a list of actors that's easily scrapable. That's only about like probably six or seven. But if let's just land on five for the easy, for, for the easy, like the math. We start with actor one, one. They're going to have, let's say 10 movies. And then for each movie, we're going to have five new actors. Two, three, four, can't count, five. And we're going to do that 10 times. So each actor is essentially going to have up to 50 connections with other actors, which you're going to start creating some pretty serious depth there. And if you've got actors that have been in tons of movies, and we can talk about hundreds of different connections per each actor page, um, you're having to make two or three requests per actor, but it still means that there's a ton of richness. There's lots of links um, that you can build off of singular pages. We've got like a one to 50 ratio here. where you are making one request and getting 50 connections. Um, so th this is a fairly good problem to solve with spiders because you have this richness on each page. It also is very highly dependent on connections between actors, which is what spiders really, really good for. It's very, very good to start with one defined root node, which is what we're going to do. We're going to define an actor and we are going to keep crawling until we find a connection between that actor and Kevin Bacon or any other actor we decide to, to land on. So we've got a very narrowly defined scope. 
we are trying to find a path between actor one and Kevin Bacon. There is no other scope. It's very, very easy. We, we, we can basically almost without a shadow of a doubt say that we are going to find a connection eventually. It may take a long time and we will see that it does take a long time, but we've got an narrowly defined scope. We've got a very easy starting point, a, a, an easy way to define a root node. And we have a lot of the scraper part built out. Really, we just have to build out the brains of the spider, tell it how to crawl and um, how to scrape those pages programmatically. Um, we're also going to be storing the stuff in a database. So if you didn't go through the database part of the last section, go back and do that. Make sure that you understand how to insert things into Postgres. If you decided to use a different technology, all the power to you, but I'm not going to be able to help you as much with that technology as I am with Postgres, just because as difficult as it was to use in the last section, it is the, the technology that I landed on. Um, so next section, we're going to get into the skeleton code. We're going to kind of define the way our program is going to look before we start filling that in with the real brains. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, like I've said in the last couple of videos, it definitely helps a lot um, if you give some kind of feedback. If you're watching this on YouTube, that can be just a simple comment saying, hey, you did this really well, or hey, this really sucked. Totally understand, probably didn't do a lot of things right in this series. Um, if you want some clarification, also a really great time to, uh, to leave that either in the comments, send me a Twitter DM, something like that. Um, if you enjoyed this, the reviews that you leave either during the course or after the course really helped me a lot. They tell me what I did right, what I did wrong, what I can improve on, maybe some new material that I can add to the course. Because the great thing is, is after you've bought it, you get access to the course to the end of time. Um, so if I add new stuff to it, then you'll also get, you know, get access to that. Um, so yeah, the reviews help me a whole lot. And uh, if you have anybody who you think would benefit from this course, obviously feel free to share it out. Um, thank you so much. See you in the next video.